But uh, I want to talk to you just briefly today about, you know, about how prayer touches our life and makes a difference. And I know that sometimes in life, you know, we may not see the prayers answered in the time that we want. Or, and sometimes because we don't, we may even lose a little bit of hope or a little bit of faith in prayer. But the Bible says to never give up prayer. Never give up on praying because if things are going to change, it's going to be because you prayed and because God heard your prayers and he answered those prayers. You know, I, I was doing a search in regards to prayer. And what are some of the questions that people have about prayer? And so these are some of the questions that I found out that these are some of the common questions that people have about prayer. People ask, how do we begin our prayers? Another question that people ask is, there, are there certain words we need to say in our prayers? Here's another one. What is the best way to eat, see answered prayers? What is the proper way to pray? Is it better to pray in the morning or at night? What do you guys think? I mean, I don't know, but that these are the questions that people are asking. And so help me out here. No, but there's questions that people have about prayer, right? You know, I, I can think about even in my own personal life that when I first kind of started maybe incorporating more prayer in my life, I wasn't exactly sure how to pray, you know, did, did I have to lock myself in a room, did I, did I have to put my hands together, what were the words that I needed to pray, how did I need to pray, how, what prayers did I need to, what, what prayers did I need to pray so that I could see those prayers answered? Because we all want to see answered prayers. And so I want to talk to you about today. And the title of my message is simply this, pray first, pray first. And I want to show you what I mean by that in today's message. But one of the things that we know, my friends, for sure, is that God wants us to pray and that God is waiting for us to pray. And then when we pray, things change, circumstances change, and things happen in our life. And do you know that for a believer, for a believer, prayer is like breathing. Prayer is like breathing oxygen. In other words, in order for you to survive in this life, you need to breathe. And in the same way, if you're going to have that strong, powerful relationship with God, and you're going to see answered prayers in your life, it needs to be like breathing. You need prayer to survive. The reality is, is that without prayer, it's going to be hard to defend yourself or overcome the enemy and the struggles that you sometimes face in life. And so prayer is like breathing. You need it to survive. And you know, when you think about prayer, do you know that you're sitting here right now and that many of you are an answer to prayer? You know, for some of you, your parents struggled to have children and they prayed and you were born. Some of you are still standing today when you were going through a hard season in your life and it didn't look like you were going to make it. Somebody prayed, you prayed, and you're here today. Someone prayed that you would get closer to God or find Christ, and here you are right now. You are an answer to prayer. You're married today or you're still married today because of prayer. In other words, my friends, you are proof of the power of prayer. We are sitting in this building here today and it is proof of the power of prayer. You know, I can tell you that in my own personal journey of prayer, I can remember a specific time, a specific moment in my life where I went from you know, just kind of pray occasionally where I understood that, you know, we should pray. You know, I remember growing up, my parents, you know, encouraging me, pray, you know, call on God. But I remember a particular moment in my life when I went from kind of praying occasionally, you know, maybe having a little bit of faith in prayer to believing in the power of prayer. And I remember it was a time when, when I, was, I was dealing with a challenge at work you know, one of those situations that you don't kind of look forward to going to because you got to deal with something or someone, right? I know nobody deals with that, but, you know. But, you know, it was one of those things and wasn't looking forward to going to work and it was kind of, 
kind of giving me some worry and it was this kind of burden that was on my mind and I had all these negative thoughts about it. And, and then I remember like, almost like if the Lord kind of whispered to me, like, you know, you can pray about that. And I was like, well, there's a thought. And so I remember I literally decided, I said, you know what? I haven't prayed about this at all. I've been worrying about it. I got negative thoughts about it. It's been stealing my joy, but I haven't prayed. And so I, I literally stopped what I was doing and I prayed and I said, God, I said, I believe you can answer prayer. And so, Lord, you know what's going on. I lift this situation up to you and, and I just ask you, Lord God, to take care of this for me. Fight this battle for me. And can I tell you that over the next couple hours before I went to bed that night, all of a sudden, I had this surreal experience. All of a sudden, this peace came over me. I, I just had this supernatural peace before I went to bed. And do you know that I had so much faith that before I went to bed that night, I said, oh, this peace will probably be gone in the morning. The problem's going to be there again. The trouble is going to be there again. I'm going to be worrying about it again. I told you, I, was, I had so much faith back then. And so the next morning, I woke up, and to my surprise, the peace was still there. And not only was the peace still there, but I remember showing up at the office, and the problem was still there. They still hadn't fired that person. And, and, and I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just playing. That's not what I said. <laughs> But you know those are prayers you pray. <laughs> and so, well, one of the things about getting your answered prayers is you got to pray according to God's will. And so sometimes it's not God's will to have that person fired because God wants them there to be a thorn on your side so that he can work on you a little bit. And uh, okay, but anyway, sorry. That's so good. But that's a whole other message. But I remember, literally, the problem was still there, but I was no longer worrying about it. I no longer had negative thoughts about it. There was no anxiety about it. There was no burden about it. That peace was there. And I remember God, in a sense, showing me in that moment, that's the power of prayer. That's what prayer can do. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I can get used to this. And that was a turning point in my life in regards to prayer. From that point on, it wasn't just praying occasionally. It wasn't just praying when I get into trouble. It wasn't just praying when I go to church. It wasn't just praying, you know, if it came to my mind. No, from that moment on, prayer became a daily part of my life. And from that moment on, every time I find myself worrying about something, stressed about something, anxious about something, fearful about something, heavy burdened about something, overwhelmed by the circumstances of life, whenever I feel like, man, I don't know how this is all going to turn out, I'm reminded of that moment and I'm reminded to go to God in prayer. Put it in the hands of God. What am I saying to you today, my friends? Pray first. Pray first. But you know, isn't it true, though, if we're honest, don't we usually do the opposite, right? We worry about a lot of things, and we forget to pray about it. We forget to pray about it. Or usually, prayer is not the first thing we do. We tend to worry. We tend to complain. We tend to lose sleep. We tend to get angry at God. And then we turn to prayer. But I want to encourage you to flip that around and to begin to train yourself consistently to pray first. Pray first. It reminds me of this, this time when the people of God were facing this circumstance and they had this, this great army that was marching up to their city. And the scripture says that some of the men came to the leader of that of, of the people of God, and they say, hey, there is this great army that is marching to our city, and, and they were in fear, and they were concerned. And the scripture says that the king, what he did is he called the people of God together, and he said, this is what we're going to do first, is we are going to pray. And the first thing they did was to pray, 
And they said, God, this is what's going on. This is the circumstance that we're facing. And the scripture describes how God fought that battle for them and he protected them and that those, those armies that were coming against them did not overtake their city. This is what can happen when we pray first. Listen to the way the scripture talks to us about this power of prayer. Again, this is a a regular discipline for us. And sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we do it well for a little bit and then we forget. And I want to encourage you to keep it up. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7 says it like this. It describes the power of prayer. It says, don't worry about anything. How many of y'all know that's hard to do? Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Just the other day, I was thinking about some of the troubles that I have right now, some of the challenges that are in front of me. And I was thinking about how I, I was just kind of just looking inward, and I was like, you know what? I, I feel at peace, even though that challenge is there. And I remember, I was like, oh, well, the reason I have peace is because I've been praying about it. I've been consistently praying and leaving it and putting it in God's hands. And so what is God doing? Is re he replaces worry with peace. And again, this is something that, that we have to do. So I want to, I want to challenge you. Maybe, maybe today you're, you're worried. Maybe you're stressed. Maybe there's a lot of things that are overwhelming you right now. I want to encourage you to go to pray over, over that. Maybe over the next 21 days, maybe that can be one of your prayers that you put in the hands of God. See, human tendency, my friends, is to try to figure a problem out in our own ability, and then we go to prayer if we can't fix it. But let's turn it around. Let's go to prayer first, and let's ask God to help us to fix that situation. And so how can you put that into practice today? Let me give you a couple practical things that you can do. How can you put this principle into practice in your life. When you wake up in the morning before anything else, pray first. Before you go to bed and snore your first snore, <laughs> pray first. And so should we pray in the morning or should you pray at night? Both. You can pray in the morning before you start your day and you can pray at night before as you go to bed. Before you step into that big meeting at work, pray first. Before that big presentation that you have to give, pray first. Before you take that exam, pray first. Before you post that post, <laughs> pray first. That's a hard one, right? You're like, oh, don't go there, Pastor. You don't even know what I'm dealing with. I, I'm going to post this. Pray first. <laughs> Only this half of the room feels what I'm talking about. <laughs> Before, let me say it again. Before you post that post, pray first. Before you send that text, pray first. I'll tell you, I, I, like, I like to give it to you real, okay? It's just practical stuff. <laughs> pray first. But here, it's, it's what happens. It's what happens when you pray first. When you pray, you are inviting God into that situation. You are, in a sense, opening up the door so that God can come in and put his hand on it and, and work on that circumstance and do what you cannot do in your own power. Every time you pray and you put it in God's hands, that's what you're doing, is you're inviting God into that situation. You're bringing all the power and all the forces of heaven to come to work in your life. When you sit down to eat, pray first. Pray first. You know, I, I, I remember one of our members told me that, that they went to, um, they were at a restaurant and they went to go eat and, 
and one of the, I think it was the daughter that said, hey, you know, we, we haven't prayed. Let's pray first before the meal. And so they prayed before the meal, and, and uh, when they were getting ready to pay the bill, the host came over and said, hey, somebody's already covered your bill. And so somebody in the restaurant saw that they had prayed first and they paid for their meal. Some of you are like, wait a minute. <laughs> Every time we go to a restaurant, we are going to pray first. <laughs> you guys are getting it. But do you know that sometimes we go without because we just have forgotten to ask God. And God is often waiting for us to pray. James chapter 4 verse 2 says it like this. You do not have because you do not ask God. I think about that moment in my life when I was worried and concerned about what was going on. And the reason that I had yet to experience that peace is because I had yet to pray. What could be, what's happened in your life today that you do not have because you have yet to pray about it. Think about it. What lack do you have today? And maybe it's because you have yet to pray. What circumstance, what, what worry or fear can just be wiped out of your mind and heart when you turn to prayer? You see, prayers that are not prayed will always go unanswered. Prayers that are not prayed will always go unanswered. My friends, as I get ready to close here today, what I'm encouraging you to do is just to be consistently mindful of the power of prayer in your life. You are an answer to prayer today. You are proof that prayer exists. Do you know that you could be one prayer away from the breakthrough that you need in your life? You could be one prayer away from finding freedom from the struggle that, you're, that you have in your life? You could be one prayer away from seeing that promise that you've been holding on to come to pass. What am I saying to you today, my friends? When the people of God pray, things happen. Circumstances change. Something that was not will come to be because we have prayed. And so what do I want to tell you? What do I want you to hold on to? Number one, believe in the power of prayer. Number two, know that it is God's heart to answer our prayers. And finally, my friends, in all things, pray first. Come on. How many of y'all received that with me here today? And so let, let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for the power of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we are answered to prayers here today, that we're here today because you have answered prayers. And Father, I lift up all the prayers that we have in our heart. And I pray, Lord God, that you remind us of them. Over these next 21 days, Lord God, help us to pray. Help us to pray bold prayers, to pray co courageous prayers, to pray prayers that maybe we have yet to pray. And I pray, Father God, even right now, that you would strengthen us. I pray, Lord God, that you would save the lost. I pray, Father, that you would heal the broken. And I pray that you would bless the faithful. And if anyone is here today, Lord God, that does not know your son yet as their personal Savior and Lord, I pray that today is that day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, listen, my friends. Let's take an opportunity to call on God together. Because the reality is, is that apart from Christ, we are lost. And we need him in our life. And so let's take an opportunity right now because I know many of you here today, you, you have a relationship with Jesus, but I know there might be others of you who you don't. Maybe you haven't received that relationship. You haven't received that forgiveness of sins. You haven't stepped into that new beginning that Jesus has for you. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what your past looks like, my friends. It's not about your past. It's about the future that God has for you. And so let's take an opportunity right now the Bible says that when we turn to what Jesus did for us on the cross, when we receive that by faith, we receive a new beginning. We step into a new season. We are forgiven of our sins, yesterday's, today's, and tomorrow's, and God has new plans for us. And so let's take an opportunity right now. Can we do that? Just, just right where you are. Just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. 
If that's you here today, you want to receive Christ, you want to step into this new relationship with God, right where you're at, as a sign of faith to him, will you lift up your hand to the Lord? All across the room, all across the room, all across the room. God sees you, my friends. God sees you all across the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You can put your hands down. Now let's pray this prayer of faith together. We believe in the power of prayer. God has called us to pray. Just say this with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins and I receive a new beginning. Jesus, today, I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Today, I commit my life to you. Now help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, my friends, congratulations. If you have made that decision today, this is a new day. This is a new beginning. God has begun something new in you. Old things are gone. New things are here. I want to encourage you, one, to let us know that you've made that decision. We want to help you. We want to send you a gift to help you in this new relationship with God. And then wherever you are in your journey, I want to encourage you to keep coming to church. Listen, my friends, the more that we're around God, the more that we spend time in his house, the more that we spend time in, in his word and praying, the more that you're going to grow stronger from the things of yesterday so that you can chase the future that God has for you tomorrow. Listen, if you're still here, it means that God isn't finished yet. And whatever God begins, the Bible says, he will come Complete. And so we're getting ready to step into this 21 days of prayer. I want you to jump in. I want you to participate. I cannot wait to see the prayers that God is going to answer. And then, of course, in just a little bit, we have our, our baptism celebration. And maybe you're here and you just received Christ and you want to take that step of baptism. Listen, we have some towels. We got you covered. And, uh, and if you want some information, our team is there in the front. They'd be glad to help you with that. But why don't you guys stand to your feet? Let's walk out of here in prayer today. And don't forget, this coming Wednesday, we have a time of worship and prayer here on Wednesday night. Bring your kids, bring your youth. We want to pray for them as they get ready to go back to school. And then also as we leave, our prayer team will be here in the front. There's anything that you want to pray about as we leave. But as you leave, my friends, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May God's peace and strength and joy fill your cup till we see each other again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you guys. Have a good one.